you can see he lines up with that row one, column one. And again, I can move him to any one of these crazy spots and he's going to line up uh, with these grids. And it's really, it's just that easy. If you're doing a virtual choir with your church worship team and you're comfortable getting around in Adobe After Effects, we have a template you can download right now that makes it super easy to bring in all of your virtual choir members, move them around, bring them in and out. And the best part is this template is free. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to use it and where to get it. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. If you're brand new here, we are all about helping you lead a worship band and be a leader of people. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and you'll never miss another video. For Easter, we wanted to feature a virtual choir where people uploaded videos of them singing their part, and then we combined all the video and audio to make this really nice, beautiful virtual choir. Now, Cameron Frank, is the media director at our church and he's been in a few videos here on the channel already. Most Sundays he plays electric guitar or bass in our worship band. He's written several books. He's a man of many talents. Like I said, Cameron's a man of many talents and he programmed an entire After Effects template that made it super easy for him to move all those virtual choir members in and out of the piece that we designed. And we wanted to make that template available for you to use absolutely free. So there is a link in the description down below where you can download it right now. Now you do need to be pretty familiar with Adobe After Effects, but Cameron is gonna show you how to get around in this template, how it all works. So you can get started today producing your own virtual choir. Okay, so I do think it's funny that, um, how many times have we been in the same room together, like even this week? I feel like I <laughs> right. spend more time with you in person like probably second to my wife and sure, right. here so, we are yeah. on a zoom call, but whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. We do like two or three of these a week too. So yeah, that's that true. We, so we're, we're all over the map. We're social yeah. distancing and, and, you know, and I think we also just have come to the fact that if you've got it, I've got it. And if I've got it, you've got it. It's, you know, it's sure the nature, the it's the nature of the fact that we have to work together. Um, <laughs> right. Right. So, so you have this After Effects file that you have created that we're going to make available for people to download and be able to use for themselves of this virtual choir. And this all came from, this, the, from the place of when you sat down and said, okay, how am I even going to wrap my head around all this? You yeah. needed a way to kind of organize and structure, you know, and you built a lot of stuff on the front end so that when it came to actually creating and moving people around, you could do that part really easily. So a mm -hmm. lot of work on the front end to get up and running on your part, but we're going to give this template to people where they can kind of get up and running quicker and then be able to get to the fun creative part, which is the enjoyable part. <laughs> right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You came to me and were like, Hey, I think we're going to do a virtual choir. I'm going to put it out there and see, see who does it. I think, up until like two or three days before the deadline, I think you texted me and said, yeah, There's so I have four two. people. Right. Yeah. And two of those were dolphins, I think. Um, so part of me was like, oh, well, that makes my job way easier. By the time it was all said and done, we ended up with 25 individual yeah. uh, videos, which, yeah, is a lot to wrap the mind around. So I'm going to share my screen here. So uh, I'll start over here with the navigation pane. Um, and we'll kind of take a look at what we're going, what we're working with. So first step, I brought in all of my assets here. Um, all 24 of those beautiful videos that we pulled from Facebook ended up here so that I could bring them into different compositions, which I'll show here in a second. So I've got this folder here, zero one edit here. That's where most of your edits are gonna happen. I built this to all kind of flow into other, other little spots. You shouldn't have to mess a ton with settings or get in the weeds of any compositions or anything in here. And then I've got this render spot. I made a few different sizes because I know there are people with screen sizes all over the place. And this is not like a complete list as complete as you know I'd like. Like there's not a triple wide version or anything like that. But it covers the bases. We have two 16 by 9, uh, 720p and a 1080p. And then we have uh, two 4x3 SD files. Um, that are 800 by 600 and then a 1024 by 768. Once you get your edit done, you can jump into any one of these and hit render and it'll spit out the size that you want. 
Uh, so try to make that super easy for you. This main right here, it says edit this composition. That's where the bulk of your editing is going to happen. And that's what we're actually looking at right down here uh, with all these different layers and files and everything like that. Whatever you edit here will happen, will reflect in the render and will be good. So you shouldn't even have to think about this until you're ready to get there. Um, the next one you'll see is the assets. This is the stuff on the back end. Some of the uh, legwork that makes this happen. Also some of the guides that make it really, really easy to see what's going on uh, here. So for example, you see this grid guide here. If we jump into that composition, this shows you one of the grid sizes that we have. This one shows you large grids, which will make sense in a second. You see large squares here. If we go into this one, you'll see a bunch of small squares. And the names make sense uh, for something we'll see in a second and the, the colors and how it all divides up. But I want to dive into this first comp right here that says edit individuals. This is where I put all those videos. All those videos I mentioned over here that I dropped in for all of our people, they each got a composition. And I went ahead and named them because for the most part, except for like Beardy, Brunette, and I think Sunglasses, I didn't know these people. Uh, I knew everybody else's name. But for me, I wanted to keep it organized and know like who I'm looking at, when, and how I can bring them in and out. And one of the cool features of After, After Effects, one of my favorite things for building something like this, is it tells you how many times the composition has been used which makes it really, really easy to go in and say, okay, have I used this person enough? Have I used them too much? I think one person uh, was used like five times. One person was used two times. Okay, I probably could have evened those out a little bit. Um, so use that to your advantage. That's what it's there for. It can help you, you know, make sure that everybody's getting, you know, the right amount of time and everything like that. But each one of these is built to be a square. Uh, when I started thinking about how to piece this thing together, how to build this in a, uh, sensible way that you know could could work and then I could start working quickly with the fun stuff uh, I decided squares are probably gonna be the easiest because I can move them around I don't have to care for example some people would film in landscape which is great which is the objective correct answer right some people would film in portrait which is not okay for this kind of format but if I go ahead and build this with a square composition I, it doesn't really affect me whichever they do which um, is helpful when when you're doing something like a virtual choir you know you're going right. to get all kinds of different file types and sizes and quality and you know you're going right. to get a whole different array of stuff and you have to be able to make sense of it all yeah exactly exactly so decided to lean on square so each one of these, once you like open the file, you'll be able to add your people here. From there, it's really, there's no like good way to get around it other than brute force editing. I'll, I will show you one more thing. So in each one of these files, uh, you'll see there's a marker here, uh, number one at exactly 40 seconds. Each one of these compositions is the same exact length, and each one of them has a marker at exactly 40 seconds. That allowed me to get, once I got everybody in sync here, I would bring in one person, I think it was actually your wife's video, Dave, that I brought into every single one of these and she was my like basis. I put her at the same like beginning to end of this composition and I synced everybody else up to her and then just deleted her video from it. Uh, that way I know as long as once I'm in my main, all of these ones line up, which you see reflected here, as long as I've done my legwork to make sure all the files are synced inside the composition, once I get here, they're synced. It's super, super easy to line them up. And so that's, that's how I was able to make sense of that side of it. And so I think that covers everything we need to know for that. So now we get to the actual brute force editing, deciding how to bring your choir in and out. So for us, we did, he is, uh, he is worthy. And it has this kind of call and response between you and the choir. So we wanted you to sing and then the choir would kind of fade in and then you would sing choir. Um, and back and forth a lot from the beginning. So you can kind of see that here. Um, they come in, they go out for the call and response stuff. And they come in and go out in all these different kind of creative ways. Uh, even here, uh, we see this kind of funky little grid pattern. I needed an easy way to do that and to build that on top of this. Um, and so I'll show you that. When you download this After Effects file, it'll be in a bundle um, with one After Effects file and two uh, After Effects animation presets. Um, I think their extension is like .ffx or something. Um, once you open this template, you go to animation, browse presets, you'll be able to go to that download uh, folder 
and grab those two presets, just hit open. It'll install them. It'll install them over here to your user presets library in the effects and presets uh, control box. So I'll show you a little bit about how those work. So let's grab Barbara and pull her into this comp. Our one does not start off lined up because uh, once I got the final, when I started building this, I didn't have the final track from Dave yet as far as where everything was gonna line up. So once I got that figured out, I figured out where the one needs to line up in this main comp, which is reflected up here. Uh, it may be different for yours, but make sure that, you know, that they do end up lining up. If you hold shift while you move a layer, it'll snap to positions inside of After Effects. So that makes it super, super simple. And I usually go into like the frame level just to make sure that it's perfectly lined up because there's nothing you want more than to get through the whole render and edit and realize somebody was off by just a little bit. So I've brought Barbara in. You can see her right there ready to sing but she's not actually really attached to any of these grid positions, right? You see the square, there's a square, there's a square, um, as reflected over, um, oh gosh, I lost it now. And you can kind of see where those squares like line up, right? She's not, she's not aligned with any of those, but we want her to be, right? So that's where this comes in. This is a large grid. Uh, we can see that it's large, right? So double click the large grid positions. It'll automatically snap her to the top left, uh, which is row one, column one. And it's really, it's just that easy. Uh, if I want to move her to any point, I can choose row two. It'll put her down there, um, which I just now noticed these aren't named, it still says row one. I'll fix that for the template. <laughs> um, column three. And you know, it, it, so it's that easy, right? I have these other little offset boxes here. There were times uh, like in that funky little grid pattern I showed you earlier where I wanted to have them offset from where, from where that is, right? So that looks like it, that's kind of in between row two and column one, and column two. So if I go to column one, she's over to the left. If I go to column two, she's over to the right. Um, I can choose the half space off offset and that'll put snapper into that position. Uh, let's say I want to put her more in the middle. I can go to row one and hit the vertical offset. Now she's there. So using these four selectors, you can put one of these large squares at virtually any position on the screen that will line up with the rest of the grid pattern that we have built. Makes it super, super easy. So that's for the large squares. Let's add in another uh, friend. We'll add Beardy. So brought him in. I went ahead and lined him up. Um, here, if you zoom in, you can kind of see that. Now we're going to attach him to a small grid. So we can grab the small grid positions, just double click. Uh, and you'll notice he doesn't look like he's anywhere you want him to be. And that's because we haven't scaled him down. I went ahead and built all of the singing compositions to be the full size that you'll need. That way you're not losing any resolution. It also makes it really easy to not need to like have a really, really bloated composition. Because with this effect, I can just hit 50% scale and it will snap him right into that box. So super, super easy. And again, the same thing here. If you want to see how this grid lays out, um, I actually have that in the small grid positions composition, uh, which you can find over here under guides. So that tells you row one, row, you know, column two, column two, row two, which these ones are actually named correctly. Go me. Um, if we go back to the main <laughs> composition and uh, grab him, you can see he lines up with that row one, column one. And again, I can move him to any one of these crazy spots and he's going to line up uh, with these grids. So that made it super easy. As I was bringing people in, it took two steps to get him to the right spot. I would line up our marker for one and then add whichever one of these I needed and select, select the position for him. A little bit of legwork up front, but it made the creative side of it way more fun where I wasn't having to make decisions about like syncing things or getting the weeds of like trying to match frames or lining things up. I could literally just look at the composition as a whole and say, hey, you need to go there or, you know, I want you to be big and in this spot and you guys can be around or whatever the case is. So yeah, once you get finished with that, I went ahead and the way I kind of worked is I built each song section. I would, you know, once I finished first one, I'd go ahead and pre-compose that just to keep it organized so that I wouldn't go nuts with having 500 layers uh, in this composition. It's not gonna break it if you don't do that. It's not, 
any more or less efficient or anything like that. Now, something I probably need to mention is that this is just for the visual side of the virtual choir. None of the audio is mixed with After Effects. I created the audio in Logic, and I can make a video on that. If that's something that you're interested in, just leave a comment down below, and if that's something you're curious about. If you want to see the final result of our virtual choir for Easter, click over here. That video down there is pretty good as well. And for more great resources for the everyday worship leader, check out practicalworshiplog.com.